Are you ready for the word this morning? All right. Come on. I said, are you ready for the word this morning? All right, much better. Uh, we are starting a brand new series today, and each and every time I look over this way, I'm getting blinded by the light, so I can't really see the, se- the screen there, but we are starting a brand new series um, today, and uh, I'll just kind of you know, break down um, what we're doing, um, and so that way you just have an idea. We're going to take the next two weeks a part of this series, and then we're going to take a break for Christmas Sunday, okay, which Christmas Sunday's coming up on the 22nd, and so make sure you're here and you invite your family and friends and all that. The kiddos are going to be performing some songs, and it's just going to be really good. We're going to have a sweet service, and so we want you to to be here and be a part of that, and so we're going to take a break from the series then, and then we'll jump back into the series after Christmas Sunday, okay, Um, as we uh, launch into the the new year. And then uh, one other thing I want to tell you about is we are having not a New Year's Eve, but a New Year's service, okay? New Year's service right here on the 1st, Wednesday the 1st, so we want you to be here. um, it's gonna. We're, we're not going to have any preaching or anything. It's going to be mostly worship, and then we're going to fellowship and, and just have a good time together. And so uh, we just want to celebrate the, the new year uh, with you and all that, and, and I believe God's going to do some great things that night. And so uh, that will be on the announcements um, starting next week, So just so you know that. All right, so we're going to start this new series today, and the title of, of this new series that, that we're jumping into is These Labels Won't Define Me. These Labels Won't Define Me. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of times times in life where where we get we get labels put on us whether we put them on ourselves or other people put them on us and uh, one of the things that I want to do is I want to break off labels, okay? Uh, The only thing that you should be and that you should know and that you should call yourself is a son or daughter of Jesus, amen? Come on, someone. You you don't have to be anything else other than that. And, you know, at at times, you know, we label ourselves just despite certain situations and circumstances and we'll put labels on ourselves thinking that is who we are. And uh, as we read earlier, uh, we know who God is. That is who you are. You're the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, all those things, right? That's who he is and he's created you in his likeness and his image. So you do not have to be what other people call you, what other people said, what you said about yourself, what you called yourself, amen? And so in this series, I want to literally just just rip off these labels that that we ourselves have put on or that other people have put on us. And and I believe that uh, that we're going to be set free um, from these specific things that I'm, I'm going to be addressing over the next month. And so... Um, but I, I'm just ready for us to look differently, amen? Uh, I'm ready, I'm ready for, for us as believers to start looking differently, that, that we won't look the same way that we've always looked, amen? That we won't look the, uh, based on what our past was or based on what uh, bad experiences we had. That's not what we look like anymore. We are a new creation in Christ, amen? Come on, somebody say amen to that. And so that is what I want us to look like. So the goal of this series is, is to deal with painful issues. We're going to deal with some painful issues that have occurred, and that's all right. There's nothing nothing wrong with that. Um, and, and, and these things, these are the kind of things that suppress the people of God and move them out of their destiny and their calling. And listen, we got to be in the will of God and operating in our destiny, operating in our calling, operating in our purpose, and that's where we need to be, right? And so we're going to remove these painful, uh, these painful labels that we have placed upon ourselves or others have placed on us. And so um, I, I believe that God's going to do something great with this. And so turn with me to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. We're going to read uh, uh, verses 25, and then we're going to uh, go all the way through chapter 3, verse 8. Okay, so Genesis chapter 2 will be on the screen for you if you want to follow there. Verse 25 through chapter 3, verse 8. Uh, we're all familiar, obviously, with, with these scriptures here. And uh, so there we go. All right, Genesis chapter 2. Here we go in verse 25. Both the man and his wife were naked, yet felt no shame. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? Verse 2, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden. Verse 3, here we go, starting with this one right here. But about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it or touch it or you will die. No, you will not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that what, what God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. 
verse 6. Then the woman saw that the tree was good for food and delight and, uh, to look at, and that it was desirable for, uh, to obtain wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Verse 7. Then their eyes were both open, and they knew they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Verse 8. Then the, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at that time in the evening breeze, and they hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. And that's the scripture for this morning. So I want, I want to break this down just a little bit. And uh, the title of this message this morning, what we see mentioned right here in this scripture, and a lot of times what we get labeled is this, the label of shame. The label of shame, Okay. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for everything you're already doing. I pray, God, that you would speak to us this morning, God. I pray, Lord, that you would just touch our lives today, Father, as you already have been. And Lord, I just pray, God, that there would just be a supernatural freedom, God, that is released in this place today. In the mighty name of Jesus, and that today, God, Lord, would be a day that all shame that has ever been attached to us, whether we put it on ourselves or others have put it on us, that every bit of shame is being broken right now in the name of Jesus, God, and that you are setting your people free, Lord. And so, Father, we release you now by the power of your Holy Spirit to touch your people, God. Heal their hearts today, God. Set them free, Lord. And I pray, God, that we would walk in the identity and fullness of Jesus Christ this morning, and that we would not walk in the identity of our past or shameful experiences or the shame that we have caused ourselves or others have placed on us. God, that is no longer going to be a part of who we are. But today, God, we are walking in newness of life and newness of freedom. So, Father, we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 All right. So the first thing that I want to address is a lot of people might say, well, what what exactly is, is shame? Okay. Because a lot of times shame, the word shame is just thrown around, right? And and, and people use it in different ways. Uh, you all we've all know about being ashamed, okay? You get ashamed of things maybe that you've done or said or, or whatever. And uh, but shame simply put is is a is a deep, painful emotion caused by something that's occurred in our lives. Okay, that's what shame is. It's a deep, painful emotion. So it's an emotion, all right, caused by something that has occurred in our lives. And so if you think about it, when, when this goes, shame, the word shame is thrown on us even when we are little kids, right? I don't know about you, but I, I, you can think about when you were little, an adult would say something to you like this, shame on you, right? That would be something that was the norm. A parent or an adult would say, shame on you for doing that. Or you should be ashamed for what you said to your mom, right? And this word has been has pl- been plugged in uh, to to I, now. You really don't hear that kind of those kind of phrases tossed around now. Um, but I, even when when I was younger, that was something that was the norm to say, like shame on you type type thing, right? And so we grow. We've grown up pretty much everybody in this room hearing shame on you or you should be ashamed and stuff like that. And so we when we hear that when we hear the word shame and we know that it's a deep painful emotion. You know that's not really the right way to to correct a child, right? Is shame on you. Because what you're doing is you're causing deep, painful emotions to arise within them that they feel, right? And that's not the way that we should be handling situations and whatnot. But if you think about, you can trace back in your life, go all the way back and think about things that maybe you did wrong, you made a mistake, you sinned, you said something, whatever it may, whatever it may be, and you felt that shame from it. You were ashamed, right? right? There's different things that you have done, and maybe even recently, maybe today, maybe even this last week, when you feel like, man, I am ashamed of what I did. I am ashamed of what I said. And uh, shame, is a, shame is a real thing, but I believe that it can become a label um, of, of who we are if we don't remove it, okay, out of our lives. Listen, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to sin. We're going to fall short. We know that the scripture says that, but that doesn't mean we have to be shameful people, okay? God did not create you to be shameful, 
He did not create you to be ashamed of your past. He did not create you to be ashamed of your mistakes. He did not create you to be ashamed of your sin, ashamed of your circumstances, ashamed of where you are now, ashamed of, the, of, of when you say, well, I wish I would be in this place now, or I saw myself in a different place at this time in my life, and I'm ashamed of that. No, 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 no. That is not the way we should be saying and we should be living as people of God. Shame should not be a part of who we are, because let me tell you why. Shame is not in your DNA. I don't care what you believe. If you don't believe that, that's fine. But shame is not a part of your DNA. I don't read anywhere in the Word of God where Jesus says shame is okay for us to carry or shame is what we're going to have. No, no, no. Shame is not a part of our DNA. And so if that is not a part of who God created us to be, man, we have got to rip off those labels. Amen? Come on. we got to rip those labels off because they don't belong to us. They don't belong to us. You see, guilt, being guilty says, I did bad, but shame says, I am bad. There's a difference. Guilt will say, I did bad, but shame will say, I am bad. And so, 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 so many of us, you know, we carry these strong emotions of, of shame because we think that's who we are. Because we made a mistake, now that is who I am. I am that mistake, or I am that thing that happened to me, or I am my past, and that is not who you are. So here's the deal. We connect what happened with who we are. Have you ever noticed that? We always connect what happened with who we are. And we, that, that makes it a part of our identity. Because this happened in my past, this is who I am. And that's not right. That's not true, right? Because at the end of the day, you've been bought with a price. You are a son and daughter of the king of kings and the Lord of lords, right? And so you are not what your past says you are. You are not what your mistakes are. You are not what you did back 20 years ago or what happened to you when you were a child. You are not that. You are a new creation in Christ, amen? Behold, all things have passed away, and behold, all new has come, right? That's what the scripture says. I'm just giving you scripture this morning. And so you are not your shame. You are not your shame. And I want, I'm going to say that a million times today because I believe that, that we need to, that needs to be drilled into our minds and our hearts today because we need to be set free, folks, We need to be set free. Come on, do you agree with me on that? We need to be set free. So it's no longer I did bad. You know, we 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 think about that when it comes to the guilt. The shame says I I am bad and 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 the things like we say, well, he he rejected me or she rejected me. Instead of saying like guilt will say that kind of thing, but but shame will say, Well, you're not good enough. You weren't good enough for that person, or whatever it may be. That's what shame will tell you. Um, you know, and and, and there'll be things like "I, I shouldn't have done that. And instead of saying that then that becomes well I am worthless or I am nothing and some of these things you have thought in your mind you have said out loud that's become part of your your personal language and your personal culture and those are the very things that we have got to break loose so see shame will tell you that you're defective damaged worthless flawed dirty ugly broken impure unloved weak and insignificant all those things that's what shame will call you that's what shame will tell you and listen that is exactly what, what the devil likes to hear. That's exactly what the enemy likes for you to feel is that shame. All of those things that I just mentioned and more, that's exactly who the devil would like to call you and who he would like you to call yourself, right? It's that, it's, that's what he loves. He loves for you to carry shame. He loves you to be ashamed of your past. He loves you to be ashamed of your mistakes. And if he can get you to dwell in that and keep that a part of who you are, listen, you cannot prosper and, and go forward in your destiny and your calling of Jesus Christ, amen? And he knows that. That's why he tries to trap you in your shame. But we don't have to be trapped in shame. See, shame, the way Satan uses it, is like a cycle. It's like a cycle. He loves to use it like a cycle. You experience, you experience something deeply painful, and that happens. And then you connect that with who you are today, right? You connect with what happened to who you are. And then you become a prisoner of that thing. You become a prisoner to that shame. And then it goes on and on. So then the next thing, next time something happens, all of a sudden, that, that's a painful experience. And then, then we connect that with who we are. Well, that happened to me 10 years ago. Now this is happening to me now. I guess that's who I am. See, it's a cycle. And it keeps going round and round and round and round. And that's exactly where the enemy likes you to be, is in that cycle of shame. 
But I believe today is the day of freedom. Do you believe that? And I believe today we can literally crush the head of shame and walk in truth. Amen? We're going to crush the head of shame and walk in truth. And so there's two things that I, I want to give you. There's two ways to remove the label of shame. I believe that, that this will really help you out in your life. And, and if you're taking notes, I encourage you to, to do so. And if you're not, um, drop my water bottle there. I encourage you to take notes because I believe that this is something that we can all, um, absolutely every single one of us, benefit from. So two ways to remove the label of shame. Number one is this. Focus on the best, not the worst. Focus on the best, not the worst. Have you ever noticed that we all, speaking for myself too, are really, really, really good at focusing on the worst rather than the best? We're really good at that. We have great experiences, good things happen all the time, but we always default to the negative bad things, right? We always, we always default to the worst things that have happened. Yeah, I've been successful. This has taken place. This has happened in my life. This is great, but this is what happened too. And this is, you know, and we always default to those kind of things. We always default to the worst and not the best. And, and what I've come to learn is that we have got to start leaning away from self-defeating thoughts and start thinking about uplifting thoughts, amen? Because there are a real thing of self-defeating thoughts where our minds will start going and then we'll just start defeating ourselves. And then before you know it, man, you're being eaten inside out. You are eating yourself alive because you're dwelling on all of these things, all these shameful experiences and all that kind of stuff. And instead, we need to be having uplifting thoughts. Yeah, I know that's what happened to me, but I know who I am today. See, that's a way that can help you. I know I went through that experience, but that is not who I am, right? Simple things like that, that is uplifting, that is encouraging, that will help us, right? And that will remove us out of the place of shame and into the place of freedom, amen? And in the place of freedom is in a place of truth. You need to start speaking truth about who you are, amen? Because my Bible says who the sun sets free, come on somebody, is free indeed. So you're either free or you're not, you're either attached to your shame or you are set free today, amen? Because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And so we are not going to be attached to our shame anymore, but we are going to walk in the truth and the freedom of Jesus Christ, amen? Because we know that the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Spirit of God, let me tell you, is here right now. So therefore, there is an automatic activation of freedom that's in the atmosphere and in the spiritual realm right now. It's automatic. It's already there. Why? Because the Spirit of God is here. And so you can and you will be set free. Amen? Amen. And see, we focus on the worst because we do this as a form of self-protection or escape. If I can, if I can be, dwell on the worst, if I can think about these bad experiences and think about the bad things instead of the good things, well, that is like a form of escape for us or a form of, of self-protection. I'd rather just get back and hide in this pain or hide in this shame. And we think that's what's best for us when in reality it's the total opposite. It's not what's best for us. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 Verse 3 through 4, it says this. I'll, I'll, I'll just look at it on the screen here. It says, For though we live in the body, we do not wage war in an unspiritual way. Since the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but are powerful, powerful, everybody say powerful, through God, for the demolition of strongholds, we demolish arguments. Okay? Now, listen. That is, we, well, the first thing that I've noticed here is that we see here that there are obviously real things called strongholds, right? And But we have the power through Jesus to eliminate strongholds that become a part of our lives. And so it says, the, the, the phrase there says to demolish strongholds. So the word stronghold there, you see it on your screen, literally means this, to fortify or a prisoner locked by deception. Wow. That is what a stronghold is, okay? It's a form of fortification. It's a way, just like I said earlier, it's a, a self-protection. We think that this is, no, 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 no. We cannot. We cannot be a prisoner locked by deception, 
okay? And that is exactly where the enemy would like you to be, is in a place where you are locked as a prisoner by the things of your past or by your shame or by your mistakes, whatever it may be. So listen, we have been given the power to break these things down, right? We have been given, that's what the scripture says. We have been given the power to demolish strongholds. I love that the Lord used that word demolish. We don't just have the power to knock down, to tap, to punch, to just poke at strongholds. No, no, we have the power to demolish strongholds, amen, demolish them. And notice it says, by the Spirit of God, it comes from God, through God, right? And so I think about, man, if he's given us the demolishing power to break down strongholds, that reminds me of what the Holy Spirit is, dunamis, dynamite, power. So we've got the Holy Spirit. We've got the power of the Holy Ghost, which is like dynamite in our life that's been given, a, that's been given the ability for us to place those sticks of dynamite in places that, that we can put them in that don't be a part of our life, that don't matter, that aren't, aren't who we are. We can place those sticks of dynamite in, light those sucker up, and boom, we see that those strongholds are broken. Come on, that's how I think of it, right? It's like, oh, that's silly, or that's cute, or no, that's not really. No, no, that's the way it is. Like, we've got the doing power within us, man, and we've got that dynamite that we can place to demolish these strongholds, amen? So you need to know that in your life today. Shame might not only be the, the only stronghold you have. There might be other strongholds that have tried to come and fortify you and imprison you. There may, may, may be other strongholds, but just like shame today, you have the power to demolish those things. And you need to know that. You need to know that you have the power within you to demolish those things, amen? And you can do it. You can absolutely do it, amen? Amen. So number, number one was focus on the best, not the worst. And number two, what I want to spend the rest of the time on is this. You can't change the past, but Christ can change your future. You can't change the past, but Christ can change your future. Come on, somebody. You ought to give a hand clap to the Lord for that. Come on, Jesus can change anything. He can transform anything. He can, he, can, he can change all of it up. He can put it pieces back together that were once broken. Remember we talked about that on Wednesday. He is the potter, amen. We are the clay. And man, he is good at forming us and changing us and molding us into who we need to be. And listen, you, you're, you can't change your past. I'm sorry. The things that happened in the past... They're in the the past for the reason. Because you've gone past them. You're not there no more. They're behind you. But Jesus has the ability to change your future. Amen? You're going to go through difficult things. You're going to go through challenging experiences and different things that take place in your life. But guess what? You're going to get on the other side of it. You're going to get to move forward. Those things aren't going to become a part of who you are. Amen? So I love that Jesus has the power and the ability to change our future. You know, I think about the incredible story of Moses, right? You think about Moses. Moses, obviously, was a a, a mighty man. Uh, We read a lot of different things about Moses in the Word of God. But did you know that Moses' people, the people that that he was born into in in Egypt, they they were slaves, he was born into slavery, all right? And for Egypt, was for over 400 years, the, the, the Israelites were, were handling and dealing with slavery. And Moses was born right in the midst of that. But catch this. I want, I, want, I want you to hear this this morning. Moses was born a slave, but God raised him up to deliver his people from slavery. So the very thing that you say, this is what I'm born into, this is who I am, this is, this is the, the, I didn't have a choice in this or whatever it may be. Those very things that you call who you are today, man, God is going to use those things to help set people free. He was born a slave, but yet he was used to break slavery. Think about that for a minute. You might have been born into a, a messed up family, a messed up situation, a circumstance that you don't like that you've had to go through. You may have been, been going through all those things, but listen, that, that's not who you are. God has, God has allowed you to walk through those things so that he can use you in those things to help other people, amen, and, and to spread the love and the gospel of Jesus through those things. So here's the deal. You got to stop believing that you are something 
that God says you're not. Amen? You've got to stop believing that you are something that God says you're not. Listen, God didn't call Moses a slave. He didn't call Moses a slave. And Siri's talking to us and saying amen too. God didn't call Moses a slave. God called Moses his son. So listen, you are not a slave to your shame. You are not your shame. You are a son or you are a daughter of Jesus. He never calls you by those things. Because again, that's not a part of your DNA. That's not who you are. Amen? See the meaning? This is really awesome. The meaning of the name Moses literally means deliverer. That's what his name means, deliverer. Now, obviously, he didn't know as an infant, and maybe others didn't know at the time, but he was actually given the name of how God would use him. Wow. Incredible. So you may have, you may have called yourself certain things. You may have created this name for yourself because of what has happened, what has occurred, what's taken place. But God says, no, I, you're not called that. You're called something completely different. And he turns your name around. Come on, somebody. He turns your name around. Amen? And he just calls you simply a son or a daughter. You're my son. You're my daughter. You're not that shameful experience. No. That's not you. You may have be been abused as a kid, but you're not abused. You may have been neglected growing up, but you, you are not neglected. That's what happened. That's not who you are. There's a big difference. You are set free. You are a daughter. You are a son. Yeah, those things may have happened. Those things may have taken place. That's not who you are. Amen. That is not who you are. You see, you may call yourself one thing, and you may really believe that about yourself. You may really say that's who I am. But you have got to know, man, that God is the God of transformation. God is the best at changing situations. God is the best at turning what the Bible says, like what the enemy meant for evil, God turns around for good. He is the best at that. He is the expert of all experts. He takes those painful situations and those mistakes and all that, man, and he turns it right around. He says, you know what? Yeah, you went through that, but I can use that. Yeah, you went through that, and you know what? I'm going to use that very thing. That's your testimony. I'm going to use that to, to reach people and to heal lives and to set people free. And listen, that is how you need to see the situations and the circumstances and things that you've gone through in your whole life. That is how you need to see them. I went through those things. I didn't like them. I'm not proud of them. It's not the greatest, but that's not who I am. And Jesus is going to use those things right there that are in my past, those experiences. He's going to use those things today because someone needs to be set free. Because someone needs to hear the testimony of what Jesus can do. He can take an impossible situation. Man, he can turn that thing around for the good. And he can use me. He can use me. He can use me. Turn to someone and say, he can use me. And now turn to them again and say, he can use you. He can, because that is who he is. That is who he is. So listen, the only way to heal from shame is to move the focus of what I'm not to who Christ is. That is the way you can be healed from shame, right there. To move the focus from what I'm not to who Christ is. That is it right there. Because here's the deal. As long as you are focused on you, you will never be enough. Think about it. As long as you are focused on you, you will never be enough. You have got to shift your focus to Christ, to Jesus. Amen. Because the Bible says that he is more than enough. We're not enough at times, but guess what? He is more than enough. So I need him, amen? I need the power of who he is in my life because he is the more that I need, 
right? He is the enough that I need. Amen? Because of Christ, you are forgiven. Because of Christ, you are healed. Because of Christ, you are new. Because of Christ, you are loved. These are things that we've heard, we hear all the time. We know those things. But is that who you are? It's one thing to know it. It's one thing to know what the Word of God says. It's one thing to know who He is, but have you made that who you are? You're not your shame. You are forgiven. You're not your shame. You are healed. You are not your shame. You are new. You are not your shame. You are loved. Amen? Come on, somebody. I I just feel the Spirit of God in this room right now. I feel the anointing of the Lord because I believe that already right now freedom is taking place. Freedom is taking place. And I believe, man, that the Lord is coming into the crevices of our heart. And he's grabbing a hold of that shame. He's pulling it out, saying, no, that don't belong to you no more. It's okay, son. It's okay, daughter. Yeah, you've carried it all this time, but you know what? Today's your day. And I'm just taking it right out. I'm removing it right away from you. Who would have known that today would have been your day? Of all days, who would have known that today would have been the day that you got set free? You may love the Lord, you may worship Him, you may go to church, all those kind of things, all great things. But who would have known that today was the day that you removed the label of shame? Shame has to go. No more shame. Turn to somebody and say, no more shame. No more shame. No more shame. So someone may have told you or you may have told yourself over, the, over time, shame on me, shame on you. But today, Jesus is say, saying shame off you. It's no longer shame on me or I'm ashamed. Now Jesus is saying shame off you. Shame off you. Shame off you. Hallelujah. Man, I feel a sweet presence of the Lord right now. See, even... Even the Israelites, when they were set free from their captivity, they still had shame within them. Joshua 5.9 says this, The Lord then said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the shame of Egypt from you. So this is some time later where they are released they're not held captive anymore. They're not, they're not in slavery anymore. All these, all these great things are happening, taking place. And then all of a sudden we read in Joshua 5, 9 that the Lord then said, Today I have rolled away the shame of Egypt from you. So I could tell you right now, today he is rolling away your shame. Man, it might be something from when you were two years old. It might be something from when you, when, when you were little. It might be something uh, that happened last year. It might be a bad experience at work. It might be a painful thing that occurred when you were growing up. Whatever it may be, I'm telling you right now, just as the Lord said to Joshua, I tell unto you that stone of shame is being rolled away. Come on, somebody. I'm reminded that when the stone was rolled away, that was a symbol of victory. Amen. Think about it. When the stone was rolled away in Jesus' tomb, that was a sign and a symbol of victory. And so it's the same thing today. Just as the Lord said unto Joshua, I am rolling the stone away of shame. In other words, you are now being more victorious than you ever were before. You are more free than you ever were before. And that is what I release to you today. Today the stone is being rolled away. Today Today is a new day. Today you are victorious. Today you are set free. Come on, someone. You're going to walk out of that tomb because you don't belong there. You don't belong there. That shame has kept you sealed in and shut for far too long. And you've thought, man, this is the place that I guess I'm just going to be. I'll, I'll just start. I'll just start setting up my home here. I'll just start. I'll just start laying my head here because this is where I guess I'm going to be. Because the stone has been blocking you from what you could be and who Christ is. And so he says today, listen, 
Look no further. Wonder no further. Question no further. I'm rolling that stone away. You're walking out of that tomb of defeat, and you're walking in victory today. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Just stand to your feet with me. Man, today he is rolling that stone of shame out of your life. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Just close your eyes with me right now. Hallelujah. Listen, you are not your past. 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 